Hey, Shalom Israel, Captain OC. Officer Elijah. And we're here with another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains. Today we're going to deal with these Old Testament Israelites that use the scripture when God says, there's no Savior beside me. They take that and say that Jesus Christ is not mentioned of in the Old Testament. So we're going to give them the uh, 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 the hermeneutics and the exegesis oh, wow. on what's taking place in context of the scriptures. Yes, sir. So let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 43. Let's read verse 10 and 11. Let's get the understanding of what God is saying when he says, there is no Savior beside me. What was going on? Why would he write that? Read that. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Uh -huh. Ye are my witnesses, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Read. and my servant whom I have chosen, Read. that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Mm -hmm. Before me there was no God formed, Read. neither shall there be after me. Uh -huh. Verse 11. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me, there is no Savior. He said, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me, there is no Savior. So if you're simple, you don't read the Bible, you may think, hey, man, he said there ain't no other Savior. So what about J.C.? Jesus Christ, man. Can't be no other Savior. Isaiah 45 and 21. Let's get some more scriptures. Isaiah 45 and 21. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 21. Uh -huh. Tell ye, and bring them near. Uh -huh. Yea. Let them take counsel together, who hath declared this from ancient time, uh -huh. who hath told it from that time. Read. Have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me, mm. a just God mm -hmm. and a Savior. Uh -huh. There is none beside me. There's none beside me. Hmm, interesting. Let's go to the book of Sirach, chapter 24 and verse 24. So God is making it very clear there's no Savior beside him. Hmm. Book of Sirach, chapter 24. Verse 24, uh -huh. faint not to be strong in the Lord, mm -hmm. that he may confirm you. Three. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is God alone. Uh -huh. Is what? God alone. Uh -huh. And beside him, there is no other Savior. Hmm. Okay, so there's no other Savior besides God. So, Hosea 13 and 4, let's get another one. Let's get another. We're going to bring them all out and make sure we get the, the, the understanding on these scriptures. So, y'all not lost out there. Hosea 13 and 4. Hosea chapter 13 verse 4. Uh -huh. Yet I am the Lord thy God uh -huh. from the land of Egypt, and thou shalt know no God but me. For there is what? No, no God but me. Read. For there is no Savior beside me. For there is no Savior beside me. So let's get the understanding of why was he continually to say there's no God beside me. No God beside me. I am your Savior. I am your Savior. I am your Savior. Why is he saying this? What was happening to the Israelites and what were they doing during this time period? We were taken captive. And what would happen? We would never go back to the God that put us into captivity. We would run to the Egyptians. We would run to the Assyrians. We would run to the other nations for help instead of calling on our own God. So he made mention. He's like, hey, there's no other God beside me. He was not talking or making reference to Christ. He was talking about during that time period. Let's, let's prove it, though. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and verse 11, and we're going to read down to 14. Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 11. Uh -huh. I, even I, am the Lord, read. and beside me there is no Savior. Uh -huh. I have declared and have saved, and I have shewed when there was no strange God among you. When there was what? No strange God among you. He's going into us being idolatrous. Read. Therefore, ye are my witnesses, uh -huh. saith the Lord, Read. that I am God. Uh -huh. Yea, before the day was I am he, uh -huh. and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. Read. I will work, and who shall let it? Right. Who can change what God wants to make happen? Read. Verse 14. Thus saith the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I have sent to Babylon, uh -huh. and have brought down all their nobles, uh -huh. and the Chaldeans, whose cry is in the ships. Joe, jump down to verse 22. Same verse chapter. 22. Verse 22. But thou hast not called upon me. What did the Israelites do? But thou hast not called upon me. Because we went to the other nations. We have not called upon God. Read. O Jacob. Uh huh. But thou hast been weary of me, O Israel. We were weary of calling on our own God. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 13. That's all it's going into. It was saying, stop treating these other nations like God and depending on them to save you. I'll give you an example. 
Stop calling on the whoever the Democrat uh, Democratic uh, politician is to deliver you. That's all. Read that. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 13. Uh -huh. For the people turneth not unto him. For the what? The people turneth not unto him. Read. That smited them. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. You see that? The people don't turn to the person that put them into captivity. That's all he was saying. Isaiah 45 and verse 21. Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 21. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 21. Uh -huh. Tell ye and bring them near. Yea, let them take counsel together. Mm -hmm. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Hath not I the Lord? And there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. Uh -huh. There is none beside Did you me. Read verse 20? Verse 20. Assemble yourselves and come. Draw near together. Uh -huh. Yea. That are, set, that, are, that are escaped Ye of the that nations. Are escaped of the nations. Read. They have no knowledge uh -huh. that set up the wood of their graven image. They set up the wood of their graven image and what? And pray unto a God that cannot save. What were they doing? Pray unto a God that cannot save. We were praying unto gods that could not save us. That's why he kept saying, I am the Lord God and there's no God beside me. He was not talking about Christ. He was talking about us going into idolatry. That's what he was going into. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11. Those nations and those idols could not save us. Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 11. Uh -huh. Had the nation changed their gods? What? Had the nation changed their gods, uh -huh. which are yet no gods? Has a nation changed their gods, which are what? No gods, which is wooden, stone. Read. But my people have changed their glory for that which do not profit. You see that? The Israelites did do that. We took the one holy true God and forsook him. That's why he had to continue saying all throughout the Bible, no God beside me, no God beside me, no Savior beside me. Why? Because they knew and remembered that what? It was the most high God that delivered us out of Egypt. But now we don't call on him? From there, go to the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17. Lamentations chapter 4 and verse 17. Let's get some more edification on that. Lamentations chapter 4, verse 17. Uh huh. As for us, our eyes as yet fail for our vain help. For our vain help, read. And our watching, we have watched for a nation. For a what? For a nation read. that could not save we us. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. Let's see what that nation was. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 31 and verse 1. Let's see, who was the nation we relied on, that we had an affinity with, that we believed could deliver us? Read. Isaiah chapter 31, verse 1. Uh -huh. Woe to them that go down to Egypt. What did the Bible say? Woe to them that go down to Egypt Read. for help uh -huh. and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. Uh -huh. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. Uh-huh. Neither. They, hold on, they do what? But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel. They look not to the Holy One of Israel. When we were going to be attacked by Babylon, who do we run to? We ran to Egypt. That is what we did continually. We thought Egypt could help us. We thought they could save us and deliver us. But God said, no, there's no God beside me. I'm the only person that can deliver you. From there, go to the book of Hosea, chapter 13 and verse 4. Let's go back there. Hosea chapter 13 and verse 4. Hosea chapter 13 verse 4. Uh -huh. Yet I am the Lord thy God uh -huh. from the land of Egypt. From the what? From the land of Egypt. Uh -huh. And thou shalt know no God but me. Thou shalt know no God but me. Read. For there is no Savior beside me. There is no Savior beside me. Jump down to verse 9. Verse 9. O Israel. O what? O Israel. Read. Thou hast destroyed thyself. Uh-huh. But in me is thine help. But in God is our help. That's all he was trying to get across to them. Stop going to the other nations and idols trying to get deliverance. Come to the man that put you in the situation. Because Christ was always there. They don't believe that, though. Let's prove it. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 1. Christ has always been there with the children of Israel. If you read the Bible, you'll know he's from Genesis to Revelations. Read that in Proverbs 8. Read. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Uh -huh. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant uh -huh. how, that our all, how that all our fathers were under the cloud uh -huh. and all passed through the sea Read. and were all baptized unto Moses 
in the cloud and in the sea. Read. And did all eat that same spiritual meat. Uh huh. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Read. But they drank of that spiritual rock. They drank of that spiritual rock. Read. That followed them. That followed them. Read. And that rock was Christ. Hold on. That rock was what? Was Christ. So Christ was in the Old Testament. So what are you talking about? You don't read the Bible. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15. You do not understand the context of the Bible at all. You can't read that. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 15. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet uh -huh. from the midst of thee, read. of thy brethren, uh -huh. like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. Unto him ye shall hearken. Who's that making mention of? Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. Let's see. Who was the prophet that we were supposed to listen to and hearken to? We're going to read down to 22. Read that. Acts chapter 3, verse 18. Uh -huh. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, uh -huh. he hath so fulfilled. Read. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out uh -huh. when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Read. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, uh -huh. whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution. Of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets uh -huh. since the world began. Read. Verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall... So the Moses said unto our fathers. What did he say? A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren uh -huh. like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And who is he making mention of? Read verse 20 again. Verse 20. And he shall send Jesus and Christ. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which what? Which before was preached unto you. Which before was preached unto you. When? In Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter, he fulfilled that scripture. Read verse 23. Verse 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Shall be destroyed from among the people. Last scripture, Acts chapter 5 and verse 30 and verse 31. Because they say that Jesus Christ, because in Isaiah, in uh, uh, Isaiah, Hosea, because he said there's no other God beside me, that, that's talking about Christ. That is incorrect, brothers. We proved that wrong. Read that. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. Uh -huh. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Read. Him hath God exalted with his right hand. With his right hand to be what? To be a prince. To be a prince. And a savior. And a what? And a savior. And a what? And a savior. Read. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So, with that, we pray you understand and got the uh, contextual understanding of Isaiah 43. That is not talking about that, that Jesus Christ is not a savior. That's not what it's going into. It's going into the Israelites, going unto the other nations and idols for help to deliver us from the coming invasions and captivities that were taking place during that time period. Likewise, we do today. What do we run to? Politics, sports, education, so on and so forth. These things will not deliver us. Our solution is in the Bible. All right, so with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.